Um, I showed you briefly the research methodology, so this is a little bit repetitious, but I just wanted to set this as a, as a framework for the details that we'll be giving out. Remember that there are five steps, and each of those steps has a specific outcome. So that's, that's part of the process, essentially. First, I have a question. Let me challenge you, I promise you. I just want to know, did the credit score come up? Um, no, because I didn't ask the questions that way. The question I asked them was, when you look at an identity, the specific question I asked was, when you look at an identity document, what is it that makes you think that it's credible or not? Okay. So the credit score question just wouldn't have gone that okay. out there. The first step here is to select the elements that represent the domain, and I mentioned that um, I selected a list of actually 12 different types of identity documents. And the way that was done was I, I actually went to these organizations and talked to one or two people in each of the organizations to try and develop a list from their experience of what the documents are that they most commonly see when they're opening new accounts. And then I consulted with them to just refine the list. Some of the things were duplicative. Some of them they said, well, now this is not, I mean, I, I would never accept this as an identity document, so we took that off. Uh, and eventually I worked that down to a list of 12. Okay? Uh, 12 types of identity documents that might be presented, not one at a time, but some combination of those 12 when a new account is being opened. The second step is the listing the constructs. That's the repertory with interview that I did in round one. The wrong one of the interviews at step two. Um, I mentioned the repertory grid technique is, is designed to elicit an understanding of how people see their world, as I mentioned. In this particular case, understanding what constructs people, experts use when they're trying to determine credibility of the identity documents. Uh, some examples of the underlying constructs that come up and the details are in the document, of course. Um, but for things like issue or reputation. So when they look at a, at a um, when they look at the Florida International University ID, I would present that there is some they have some sense of the issuer's reputation. How much how well how much can I rely on FIU's process for issuing an ID? In some I'm not going to say what their opinion was on an FIU ID. Um, but that's just to give you an example of issuer reputation. Okay. Another, maybe better example is if I presented an Alaska driver's license, they tended to accept that <coughs> just because states in general have a good reputation of issuing documents, issuing identity documents. So they tended to accept most any state's driver's license. Um, autograph and signature being present, that was important for a lot of people. And the, the presence of tamper resistant features and identity <coughs> documents was also another one of the attributes that was important. So the fact that it has a hologram or that a Florida driver's license, the number has the number has certain meanings. It tells you whether you're male or female and it tells you your name, what day you want you were born in and so on. Those those kinds of features prevent tampering. Uh, prevent tampering. Um, also as I mentioned, I asked the experts during this first round of interviews to tell me trends that they saw based on their experience that could completely change the way they go about the <coughs> credibility in identity documents. I want to get a sense of what different futures might look like so that I can develop the scenarios that I use. Uh, the results here um, identify 21 attributes that credit identity documents that seem to make identity documents credible. Six trends came out. Three of them were related to technology. One is the presence or absence of electronics on an identity document, a Mac stripe, a barcode, in some cases an RFID chip. Um, presence or absence of advanced biometrics, um, like a fingerprint, DNA information, even in one case. Um, another technology related trend was the trend towards virtual customers and digital identity. There are actually some banks now that will open a new account online. So it's virtual customers in the new account setting. And there were three trends related to what I call strong or weak authentication. Um, if 
about the, the three trends being one is a trend towards having a single source of issuing identity document. There's actually a big effort going on in this country to try and have one issue of all identity documents. It's called the Real, Real ID Act. Um, and there are some countries, the UK is almost there, Australia I think is, or maybe New Zealand is almost there. So um, just to tell you what the different uh, education from the week of education trends are. The scenarios. This is in the document that is described, but just to tell you what the process is that you go through building scenarios. Um, I, I can probably summarize it better in this next slide. Having classified the different trends into the two groups that I mentioned, the low-tech, high-tech versus weak authentication, strong authentication, I use those four, those two sets of classifications, one set and another set. And just by combining, by assuming that the trends went either weak or strong, that they went either low-tech or high-tech, that gave me four possible scenarios. Okay, that's, that's a really quick summary of this scenario building process. Um, <coughs> this current situation, the low-tech, you know, where the customer is physically present, <coughs> there's not much biometrics or electronic. The weak authentication where essentially anybody can issue an identity document, an employer, a bank, a state. Um, that's more or less the way things are right now. Okay. This fourth scenario, the high tech and strong authentication, that, at least in this country, that's sort of the furthest in the future. Although all of the people that I interviewed agreed that it wasn't impossible, it was simply further in the future. So they were all very much possible trends. Yeah. Is it possible to have high tech authentication and low tech strong authentication? I'm sorry, possible to have those? Yeah. Sure. Um, high tech would be a situation where you have, let's say, uh, you have a virtual customer, you have a document that has an RFID chip in it perhaps, um, and you have, but you have weak authentication and that's still you're in a situation where almost anybody can issue a document. The document may be a high-tech document, but you're not limited to just doing that like that. You're not limited to a single issue. So yeah, sure. And, and in, in the document itself, I go into some more details about how that will work. Yeah. Um, just to give you an example of the cluster analysis that I did. Now that I've gotten all these ratings, you say, well, that's nice. But so what? Okay, here's the so what. What I did was, for the, the, the columns are, oh, I should say, each row represents one of the characteristics, one of the 21 characteristics, or attributes of identity documents. <coughs> each column represents one of the experts' ratings. And what I did was to sort the rows so that the highest consensus rows are at the census. This tree on the right, suggests that these are these uh, characteristics, that's where you have the highest consensus. Uh, you see that they're all just about just on they're all over 90%. There's a 90% line. And they're all just about or slightly over 90%. In the details I have the exact numbers and so on. I can get into that but just to explain what this picture means. Um, so in step, we're in step four. Sorry, yes, yes, sure. Back one. So there is one thing that we're not looking here at importance, we're looking at consensus as what the story is. Consensus among the experts is not importance. It may be rated very important, possibly, but not equally so by all 38 people. This is telling us about consensus, not about rating, not about average rating. Oh, okay. okay. Average so rating is there as well. Question one, not question two. Correct. Gotcha. Correct. This is question one answer. Well, no, because there are ratings in here. This is consensus of the rating. 
So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through these fairly quickly because they're, they're all essentially the same. They just relate to the different scenarios. And again, you, know, you have the details in the document. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so this consensus of data usage that basically means that though you're saying data for data of expiry, those may have low rating, but everyone, everyone, everyone agrees that there's a low rating. That's what, that's yeah, right, exactly. There's agreement that 